You know, the, uh, the electricity grid has been called by the National Academy of Engineering the greatest machine ever built. When you look at this image, you can see that electrification is tantamount to modernity. The dark areas are either uninhabited or impoverished. Remarkable as the grid is, it suffers from one important shortcoming. It lacks on a massive scale the ability to store charge. It's sort of like every time you want to take a shower, it has to be raining right then and there. You know, the electricity that's powering the lights in this theater was generated just moments ago. And, and this inability to store charge leads to consequences. It makes the grid fragile. It's susceptible to blackout, wide fluctuation in price. And we deal with this shortcoming by endowing the grid with a superabundance of generating capacity, 30%, 40% more than we need for average demand, just to meet that less than 1% of peak. So wasteful. What I want to talk to you about today is a solution to this problem. It's called the liquid metal battery. It's a device I invented at MIT, working with a team of my graduate students and postdocs. But before I dive into the chemistry of the liquid metal battery, let's set the stage. So I'm going to begin with a history lesson. The battery, you may not know, was invented by a professor, Alessandro Volta. With this invention about 200 years ago, he gave birth to a new field of science, electrochemistry, and new technology, such as electroplating. Perhaps overlooked by historians is the fact that with this invention, Volta also, for the first time, demonstrated the utility of a professor. <laughs> Until Volta, no one imagined a professor could ever be of any use. And when we start looking for batteries that can work here, because of the scale, we're talking about tons and tons and tons of material. We have to stay away from certain parts of the periodic table. We have to look at only Earth-abundant elements, because that's the only stuff that's going to be abundant, cheap, and scalable. How cheap? It has to be dirt cheap. And the only way I know how to make something dirt cheap is to make it out of dirt. <laughs> With that seed money, I was able to hire on one student. That's it. That's my team in 2007. That student looks worried. <laughs> he should be. This thing wasn't working. He wasn't sure it was going to work. I didn't tell him, but I wasn't sure it was going to work. But he wanted a PhD. He's young and he's smart. I, you know what mentoring is? You tell him you can do anything. We heard that earlier today. And he did it. Made the first battery. But then in 2009, my luck changed. I got a $4 million grant from... Total, French energy company, and then $9 million from the newly formed ARPA-E branch of the Department of Energy. And with $13 million, I expanded my team to 20 people. Multinational task force of students, postdocs, graduate students, all very smart, all very literate in chemistry and electrochemistry, no battery experience. I taught them how to think about the problem, encouraged them, and then set them loose, and they work miracles. And why do they work for me? Because they have a sense of higher purpose. They don't want to just get a PhD and write a paper. They want to change the world. They want science and service to society. And that's what this is all about. The liquid metal battery is just the agent of the story. This is about young people who want to change the world do so with science. Well, less than two months ago, um, it was actually September the 12th, to be precise. It was the 50th anniversary of President Kennedy's speech at Rice University here in Houston, the speech in which he justifies this nation's decision to go to the moon. Now, when viewed as a metaphor, that speech is about much more than space travel. It inspires us to take on great technological challenges, like grid-level storage at the price point of the electricity market, or uh, electric vehicle batteries that are competitive with internal combustion. My favorite line of the speech, and I'm, I'm going I'm to take some liberties here and paraphrase, and when I look at this image, I say that my students and I 
choose to work on transformational innovation in electricity storage, not because it is easy, but because it is hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our skills and energies. And that challenge is one that we are willing to accept, unwilling to postpone, and one that we intend to win. Now let's finish the job.